Those angle with grip, not exactly what I expected. We'll try one more, but it's good data. Welcome back to this Balls Golf Channel. And today we have a new toy, Tech Disc. Uh, I was actually wondering when a launch monitor would come out for disc golf. Uh, Tozy had one through their Indiegogo that had various issues. Uh, they had uh, manufacturing issues. They had they wanted their stuff PDGA approved, uh, but the problem is those models ended up breaking, and so. It got delayed. Tech Disc beat them to the punch, and this is actually uh, it's a it's actually a Discraft Force with the Tech Disc brain uh, secured to the bottom of it. So uh, it's basically a launch monitor for disc golf. I just spent a bunch of money, a lot of money, on a, a, a top of the line disc golf or launch monitor for traditional golf. Yeah, I, I, I was pretty much obligated to get one for disc golf because I really think it's the, the future as far as figuring out like, you know, disc golf is so young as far as optimization uh, that people still think there are certain form things you need to do. You know, I, I'm going to call it now. Golf is the same way. They're like, OK, you got to do this with your swing. You got to do whatever. I think disc golf people are like, oh, yeah, get the full reach back. Do the thing. Power pocket. I think there's going to be a lot of different ways to get the optimal speed and spin. If there is even if there even is an optimal speed and spin, because like so young uh, and the the metrics are so limited. So today we're going to look at the the uh, the tech disc. I was just rambling because I'm very excited about it. I got the net set up. I was going to set up the radar gun behind, but it looks a little you know sketchy out here. Through tinkering with it, I found that. What I thought was a pretty flat release uh, was actually seven degrees nose up. So that means the disc is flying through the air like this. And all of that air underneath is slowing, my down, slowing it down and reducing distance. So I was curious if a simple grip change going from, say, like a more stacked three finger like this to a more aggressive pissed off this over the top more more thumb along the rim would get that nose down and get any extra distance so that's what we're going to try today and tinker with this in the process so traditional grip let's see what kind of nose angle we get this is when i'm just trying to throw it like flat what i consider flat Felt, felt like it went down into the ground. Nose, 8.7. Launch, 7.6. Not particularly impressive. What, 200 and, uh, 201 feet it said, 53 miles an hour. But that's, that's about what was happening for me was, it was about seven degrees down, seven degrees up, equaled flat when I threw it flat. That was a, threw it kind of downward a bit, but, uh, so what I thought would be equal to a flat flight was actually me throwing it downward, upward, and they would just cancel out. Uh, there's a video of the Dotties where I threw it low and it just kind of got that low, like air bounce type throw. And that's not optimal for distance. Let's try a second one here. I felt better. One more of the traditional and we'll actually tinker with the new grip. So, nose 7.3, launch minus 4. Similar spin, a little, I mean, similar speed, a little better spin. But, uh, still didn't get the turn. And still didn't get the nose, nose down. Now I'll try the pissed off grip. Basically, I was like, oh, my nose is up, huh? Okay, fuck you. I'm gonna and I basically decided to grip it over the top like to just force so for me it's like what would what would release you know if i'm releasing this way and that's nose up i basically just decided i was gonna grip over the fucking top of it and just force that nose down so that when i came across 
in theory. So let's try it. Piss off throw. Ooh, that came out different. So 43 feet. I really should have like a reaction cam. You know what? I'll do that. So the nose there was actually only 3.6. So I think I think that grip has potential for getting the nose down. And really, I'm just kind of sliding my hand over until I can fit. And it's almost kind of like pressed against the pulp here. Pulp, I don't know, meaty part, whatever you want to call it. It's like almost forcing the nose down. It's very funky. Let's try it again. Maybe a little higher. Oh, it's still so low. Nose 2.4, launch minus eight. Not gonna do the trick. Let's try getting it in the air a little. That's a little better. Ah, 6.4. Let's tinker with the flight numbers. Let's see what these say. Speed 10, glide 5, turn 1.25-ish. Minus two. It doesn't let you tinker with the fade for whatever reason. I'm not sure why. Could just be the chrome issue. Whew. I literally almost threw out of my shoe there. Definitely wrong shoes for this, but it shouldn't vastly matter. We're just trying to get the nose down mostly. Nose six three. That one actually turned over. So it doesn't look like the grip is really dramatically changing the, uh, the nose angle. So what will? I felt better. Nose seven four at launch, minus one five. That one said 327. So if we can get that over, we could probably get close to 400. That felt good. Nose. Uh-oh, here comes the rain. So the grip doesn't seem to be changing the nose angle, which is interesting. So I thought for sure that if I had it... Hmm. I don't know what's doing it then. Felt like a good pull. And I think it was because I got it here late and that created lag. Nose is still 6.8, launch minus four. Flight completely different. So my theory about the nose with the change of the nose angle with grip, not exactly what I expected. We'll try one more, but it's good data. Like I'm learning a lot about my throw from it. I felt pretty good. Nose 5.2. <laughs> the flight on that is pretty wild. Still says 338. Launch was pretty flat. The nose up got it all the height. Hmm, fascinating. Overthrow is doing a really good uh, series on the tech disc, which is it's definitely worth checking out. I need to watch more of them, but uh, they're they're going in depth with like how to maximize your distance with various arm speeds. That felt better. That felt actually kind of really good. Nose four point seven launch negative one. Or negative point one, sorry. What's it up to? What's this fucker up to? Oh gosh. 354, never quite found the full flight.
So there you have it, Tech Disc. Uh, did we learn anything today? A little bit. Uh, we've learned that I still don't know what the disc, what makes a disc go far. Yeah, I had some nose up ones that went farther than nose down ones. I had the disc settings that I didn't really tinker with much, but uh, still, it is really fun to you know throw into a net and not have to chase all your discs down. And in theory, you have a disc that flies the same every time, so it should give you reliable-ish results. As far as getting data and getting like something that you can then take to a field and uh, improve, I think it's a fantastic thing. I think it's going to change the game once some of the pros get a hold of it and start tinkering. I don't know. I think it's going to be interesting to see some real numbers from people who know what they're doing. I, you know, kind of know what I'm doing. Definitely more with golf than disc golf, but yeah, Tech Disc, check it out. It is tons of fun. As always, thank you for watching and hopefully I see you on the course.